Hi, it's Russ from Protos Expert. And I want to show you a really cool tip that we were sent as part of our community tips and tricks this week from Steve Peach, who's based down in Australia. Or if you're in Australia, obviously, it's where you are. But I'm in London, so here's the other side of the world. And it's a really cool trick. And uh, it's one of those ones that you kind of face palm when you think, why didn't I think of that sooner? Some of you may already be doing this. And if you are, then then brilliant. But thank you, Steve Peach, for sharing this with us because uh, I know established members of the community have been using Pro Tools for years, and uh, th they saw this and said this is really cool. And so we wanted to show you the video version of his tip, just so that you could uh, grasp it as well. And uh, first I want to show you what I've got on here right now is an instance of Stylus RMX, and uh, an instance of Trillion, and an instance of Omnisphere uh, from the guys over at Spectrasonics. And uh, what you would often do, what most of us often do is, for example, if I was going to, I'm going to come out to the mix window for a second just to show you this, if I was to uh, instantiate a stylus, then I would often, and perhaps you don't, but this is what a lot of us would often do, is once we've got one instance of stylus in, then we'd create MIDI tracks and auxiliary inputs to get all the audio back in. However, Steve's trick is pretty straightforward, which is basically rather than create MIDI tracks and auxiliary tracks, because effectively an instrument track is a MIDI and an audio input track at the same time, then basically you create those instead, and you have very nicely now these organized. So I now have all eight outputs from Stylus coming in, I have the MIDI controlled up here, and I have the audio controlled down here, and then I can insert plugins as I want to, 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 to work when I need them. Uh, let me show you an example. I'm going to uh, insert a instance of Superior Drummer. I'm going to use the, sh the new shortcut. I'm in 11. This would work in 10 as well. But I'm going to ins insert uh, an instrument of Superior Drummer here. And let's pop that in. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to put Superior Drummer in. There we go. Let's plug that in. So now that's in, and we could go to a groove, we could play a groove quickly, and play that. So that's in. So what would often happen then is if I wanted to then, I'm going to come into the mix window this time, if I wanted to then, let's say, have the separate output of the kick coming in, uh, I, would, I would basically go track a new stereo, Auxiliary input. Then if I wanted to create the MIDI as well, I would then go track new MIDI track. And what I'd have now is I'd have my kick drum and I could then assign that out to the superior drummer channels. Uh, and then, then I'd have the uh, audio coming in here. But what Steve said instead, and it's really quite cool. It's ob obviously more useful when you're using instruments where you have uh, multi-channels such as stylus. So if you look at stylus now, I have all my MIDI there coming in and audio for every instrument within stylus on separate tracks, but all contained in one track. So I've got my, my MIDI and my audio for, for each separate input and output, MIDI input and output coming in through here. So with stylus now, what I could, with superior, sorry, what I could do instead is I could uh, add in some instrument tracks, for example, Let's add three for now. That could be kick, snare, and hats. Add those in. Uh, then I could then bring them in from my input stage here. Now, there's a, well, I don't know if you know this trick. There's two ways I could do it. I could go input, plug in, choose superior drummer three and four, then go to the next track five and six. But if you actually select all three of those and you press the command and the alt key and the input and you choose the input the first input you choose it will then cascade down and so say three and four five and six seven eight you see them coming in now so that when i go to my mixer now i can send all the kicks out three and four three and four three and four snare drum five and six and then the hi-hat is here seven and eight now when I play it, now 
Now where this gets interesting and actually quite useful, just stop that for a second, is now I could, what I could do is I could come to my grooves here for a second. I'm going to go to like a chorus. Let's find something I want. Play that. up here a bit uh... I'm going to choose that one I'm going to drag it in into my kick here turn it all off for a second stop that for a second grab that and bring that into there to kick and then if we go into that a bit Closer. I'm just going to make that bigger for a second. First, I'm going to assign that out to Superior Drummer. That. Now, if I come in here, there's. If you listen to this for a second, I'm just going to play this. So, I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to copy those down by pressing the Alt key. I'm going to come into this one first, and I'm going to get out all of everything. Of those so now the kick drum got the snare here that will go out to superior drummer I hope you're getting what's going on here so there's the snare there's the snare so let's so now the snare is on a separate track What we also want to do as well is bring that up here so we have everything but the snare. That's all the hi hats. That's that's hi hats as well. But everything else is cleared out. Let's just do the hi hat track very quickly, and we are then rocking and rolling. Superior drummer. There we go. Let's double click on that. So. They're all gone. They're all in. So now we have, just duplicate those. Now we have separate MIDI and audio control all in one channel for each of those stems. So you need to go back there and get the, So that's the snare. It looks like we've got the outputs assigned slightly wrong there, so I'm going to go back to my mixer. Yeah, that needs to go to 5 and 6. There we go. There's the rest of the kit, so it's all in there now. So now we have MIDI control. And we have audio all on one channel. So I can turn that snare drum down there. Pull the whole kit down a bit. So there's my room. Hi hats. But I've also got the MIDI control here, so I can change the MIDI volumes and stuff. So there we are, a really, really simple uh, way of improving workflow. It's much cleaner. It means it's all contained in one, in one segment. And uh, I think it's a brilliant trick. And thanks for Steve submitting that to the community. Uh, big thumbs up, Steve. I hope that's been a help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.